What's up, Fall Off War Builders, and welcome to the first lesson in my No Mod Shop class here on the School Zone. You saw the orientation video, and we took our first tour of the sample settlement. Now it's time to get down to business. And by the way, I'm so glad you guys like my Vault 42 build. I'd say around 95% of the comments were positive, so that makes it worth all the time that went into building it to show you guys. But it'll also serve as the basis for many of the upcoming building lessons for the No Mod Shop class. I'm still working on the Total Immersion Tour. That's going to be really fun to watch, but because of the game crashes and stuff, it's going to take me a little longer to post. But like I said in my 4th of July video, we can just continue on with the tutorials while I work on that. Also, some people in the tour video comments are still convinced I use mods, which I think is great actually. It means I did my job well, you know what I mean? This goes to show that you don't need mods to make a fantastic looking settlement. Mods can certainly save you time, there's no doubt about that, but a little knowledge and creativity still goes a long way in the vanilla game. Now before we begin, I'm looking for some friendly volunteers from the PS4 and PC community to help me translate some of the button commands I'll be talking about in these no mod shop classes. I currently use an Xbox One, and as soon as we get a few more Patreons on board, I'll be buying a PS4 as well. But I'm open to all the platforms, and there's no peasantry or master races on the school zone. We're all classmates here, and we're all Fallout 4 fans. We just happen to use different vehicles, and just like on the street, there's room for cars, trucks, and motorcycles alike. No room for road rage. So if you want to volunteer a comment in the After School Club on what the button equivalents are for your fellow platformers, that would be awesome. Just make it friendly and informative, and those comments that get the most likes from others will get one of those heart-type likes from me. That way viewers down the road will know it's good official information to go by. All right, in today's lesson, I'm going to equip you guys with what I think are the top five must-know settlement workshop tips to maximize your building capabilities. Without these, settlement building can be rather frustrating. Now, a lot of you may already know some of these, if not all of these tips, but just keep in mind that this is a beginner lesson, and there are going to be plenty of beginners tuning in and just getting into settlement building. That's why I'm writing this lesson with a green circle, just like I mentioned in my intro video. However, even for experienced builders, there may be one or two tips you might not have known about, and that right there would make it worth the price of admission, which is free. <laughs> so no need to comment, you already know this stuff. Don't worry, the black diamond and double black diamond lessons are coming down the half bite. I just wanna make sure everybody is first equipped with the right tools in their toolbox, and that'll save me time in future videos when I can refer people back to this video with questions. Boom, let's get started. here at my Abernathy Farm settlement. <laughs> if you guys saw some of my earlier builds, this was my first settlement attempt. And I went so far over the size limit that my game started crashing and it started making some of my other videos hard to record. <laughs> I'll put links to those if you wanna see so what some of the effects are. So what I did was I came back and I just sort of deconstructed this uh, settlement and I'm, now I'm just gonna use it as a building platform to show you guys stuff. So I'm gonna run over and close this gate so we're not bothered. <laughs> and see, we have this nice uh, open area that I can use in front of my little backdrop here. Okay, so the first must-know tip I'm going to show you guys are the workshop arrows for seamless menu selection. In web speak, these are called breadcrumbs. Let me tell you what I'm talking about here. See those little arrows that are on top of this special box or this structure box now has right and left arrows as well as a top arrow? Well... You know about the left and right arrows, but did you know about the top and bottom arrows? Some of you might not have known that. So the reason why this is important is because most of the time, beginner builders completely overlook these arrows. And when they go to build something, let's just take a, put a bed down right here. All right, see how it automatically tries to build you another bed? Most people go ahead and hit the cancel button and see, I can't look down at the floor here without it selecting something. So they'll look up at the sky or find an open space in order to go through and start selecting the, the different things they want, all right? And they'll usually press select to go into the tables or shelves, containers, building structures, whatever. But you don't need to do that. You can use the keypad and of course, whatever the equivalent is on the PC that I'm sure that our friendly PC platformers will translate for us. So next time you place a bed, I'm gonna store this, go back into beds. All right, I'm gonna place this, and then instead of pressing cancel, 
let's say I want to add, you know, a wall behind it. I'm just going to press the down arrow key, down arrow key again, back to our basic line here, go up to structures, press the arrow up key, go to wood. Up, oh, I didn't go high enough. There we go. Up to wood, over to like walls, and then we can just place a wall right behind it. That entire time, I didn't have to look away or press the cancel button or anything like that. <laughs> Don't feel bad if you didn't know about this trick. I, I actually didn't know about it for the first few months that the game came out. And even to this day, I still see other building channels, you know, running around trying to find an open space to look at. And I'm like, wow, maybe they don't even know about it either. So if you already knew about it, good on you. Once you know about it, it's going to seem pretty obvious. But <laughs> until you know about it, then it, you know, it's elusive. So uh, hopefully that tip will help you guys out. No need to stare at empty space anymore and use the cancel buttons. In fact, once you become really familiar at it, you can just start zooming through the menus, up and down, left and right, finding exactly what you want. I don't even use the, uh, the sticks anymore. I mainly use the, uh, the keypad uh, for selection. The only thing I use the sticks for are for, you know, more precise placements and stuff. So yeah. Yeah, hopefully that'll help you guys. Must know tip number two is what I call 3D telekinesis. All right, and that is moving workshops around while you're stationary in your 3D environment. This is another must know tip if you didn't know it. So what do I mean by that? All right, well, let's get rid of this wall for a second. And we're gonna select this bed. And let's say I want to place it a little farther away. Most amateur builders will run over to where they want to place it and then place it down. That's fine because we have an open forum here, but it may not be so easy if you're stuck behind an object or you want to place something a little farther away on a shelf, you know, and there's uh, furniture in your way. So what you can actually do is move these objects. Of course, you know you can move them in the air, but you can actually move these objects along an XYZ axis while you're standing completely still. And the way you do that is you hold down the bumpers. The left bumper, and once again, this is on an Xbox. You guys can translate this for the other platforms for me. I'd really appreciate that. Everybody else would too. But in this case, on an Xbox, you're going to hold down the left bumper. You're going to press the select button. And now you can move the left stick up and down. All right? So that you can raise it or lower it. Is it in the ground? Let me check out something. Oh, no. Okay, I just wasn't looking down. I was like, I sunk the bed in the ground for a second there. Nope. Okay, so the left bumper and the select button, hold it down, and then the left stick will move the item up and down, okay? Now, moving it left and right, and, you know, forward and back. That's the right bumper. Right bumper, don't worry about that pops up once in a while. The right bumper, now you can move things forward and back and left and right. Just slide it all around while you're remaining completely stationary. And in case you didn't know, because you know, it's a school zone, the X axis runs left and right, the Y axis runs up and down, and the Z axis runs forward and back. So when I say, for example, in future lessons uh, that we're going to be moving along the x-axis, that would be the right bumper. Select, now we can move along the x-axis. All right, the z-axis, forward and back, that's still the right bumper. And then the y-axis, left bumper, up and down. Okay, so hopefully that helped you guys out. Must know tip number three is junk item placement. A lot of people are still baffled by this and they're like, man, you must have spent a thousand years placing all those things on your shelves and in the edematics and all that stuff. All right. Nope. There's a trick to it. <laughs> okay. The first trick is when you first drop items out of your inventory. All right. So I'm going to go into my inventory, go over to junk and see if there's something I can drop. Perfect. A little vase. See, when you drop it, it just falls flat on the ground. Now, before you touch it, and I'll explain why in a second, before you pick it up, go into your settlement mode, and now you can select it, and it'll pop up right. And from there, you can actually place it onto things. And the triggers will actually rotate it left and right. All right, so you can get it exactly the way you want. But sometimes, objects don't want to fit on shelves the way you want them to. 
All right, let me see if I can find an example here. Uh, the Willow Bud Bay seems to go on onto a lot of things, but <laughs> so that may have not been the best example. But anyway, here's the point. Let's say, for example, it's on the ground and you want to place it on top of like this uh, paint can. and it doesn't work with the settlement option I just gave you. Well, most amateur builders are gonna try to, you know, push it along and make it turn upright. It just, it just doesn't work. They may know about one direction with the uh, left and right trigger. And in this case, that worked out perfectly because it turned upright, okay? So I'm gonna set this down. When you pick up an object, you can actually change the X, Y, and Z axis. Uh, let me show you. There's three clicks of the left thumbstick that will give you options to change those axes. So I'm gonna click the left thumbstick once, and now when I go back to the triggers, left and right, now we're changing to a different axis. Then we're gonna change it one more time. I'm gonna click. What it is is sometimes it'll go left and right, up and down, and other times it'll just rotate. All right, it depends on the object. So if this object was on the ground, and I wanted to place it on the table, then I could pick it up, find the right axis, and see how it's at an angle like that? If I try to place it on the table now, it's just gonna fall over. So here we go, click, there we go. Now I can just place it, so simple. As a matter of fact, I use this method to place objects sometimes more than the settlement selection option. And the reason for that is, is because once you drop an object, this is a good example. Yeah, the umbrella stand. <laughs> a lot of you guys are probably wondering how I got the umbrellas into the umbrella stand. And speaking of which, it's now raining. All right, so if I go into settlement mode, select it, it turns upright. All right, I'll place it and then exit out of settlement mode. But if I then bump into it and it falls over again, and if I go back into settlement mode, and I select it, it doesn't turn upright. It's going to stay where it's turned or got knocked over. I don't know why that is. They just, I guess they decided uh, when they were building this workshop that maybe you've placed an item and you want it to stay in that position. You just want to be able to move it around in the workshop mode. So now there's two options. You can exit out of here take it, drop it again, and it'll go back to the settlement mode, allowing you to place it upright. Or in this case, I just it's just quicker for me to pick it up, rotate on its axis, click, rotate, click. There we go. I can set it down and it'll stay upright. Same thing with the uh, umbrella, if I wanted to place an umbrella in there. All right, so hopefully that uh, tip number three will help you guys. I'm going to go sleep and I'll be back when it's back to a sunny day and we'll continue on with number four. All right. I feel well rested. I just hopped on this bed that I'd built a second ago. Okay. So now on to must know tip number four, walking through walls. All right. Now, what do I mean by that? Okay. So a lot of uh, beginner builders will construct something or even advanced builders, I'll explain why in a second. They'll construct something. Let's go to concrete walls. There we go. And they'll get to the point where they've somehow boxed themselves in. And they're like, oh man. I uh, can't fit through there. And it's too short of an area to build stairs. All right, so how do you get out? Well, most people would probably fast travel back to their settlement, and then they're out of that little place where they painted themselves into a corner, so to speak. But instead, what you can actually do is select the wall, walk through the area, and then cancel it, and it pops back into place. And once again, if that seems obvious, 
Trust me, it's not so obvious to some people. All right, but this is incredibly useful in situations where you've done just some really good building and you realize that you've got to get to another area. And I'll explain some areas in my own building of Vault 42 where I had to use this method. There were some moments when I had to get back to the uh, fusion generator to hook up a new wire and uh, I didn't want to just build another generator. You know, I was like, there's got to be a way I can get back in and hook up some other stuff without disrupting everything that I've built around it. And the great thing about this method is that, you know, of course, you can go the other direction. All right, select it, push in, deselect it, and it pops right back into place. All right, now, if you're worried about things that are attached to it, you shouldn't be worried because they will all stay there. Even items that you've rug glitched into the items that you're going to walk through. Signs will stay there. Paintings will stay there. Let me throw a painting on the wall here and I'll show you. Painting. Let's throw like a, um, let's see here. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I'll just uh, build a generator for that so you can see how. Okay, and then uh, we'll put a, uh, let's see here. Put some, like a connector, something right there. And then uh, the last thing I'll do is, um, yeah, <laughs> if I move these, these, are they going to fall off? Oh, that's fascinating. Maybe they don't fall off until you. Yep, <laughs> that's what I thought. Okay, so uh, we put these objects here. Oh, great. Okay, I'm back. Do you see what I did there? I actually selected the floor and I fell through it, okay? Which actually is a little bit of a bonus tip in here. Quick save often, even full saves every once in a while, but make sure you quick save often because when you get excited, see right there, I, I see I'm consider myself a master builder and I just got really excited right there, hit that uh, floor and just everything sunk right through. If I was in the middle of a major idea, and I hadn't saved and I just blew everything, I would be so frustrated. So when I'm normally going through my own builds, I'm very meticulously constructing stuff. I am quick saving like crazy. All right, see, there's a good example. Let's pick that thing up, rotate the axis. Perfect. Okay, why am I going through all this rigmarole here? because I want to show you guys my point. We don't need to place everything on the table. Okay, so, paintings. Don't select the painting, but select the concrete wall. Anything clipped to it will stay. Deselect, and it pops right back into place. Same thing with this uh, generator and conduit. All right, pop. Deselect, pops right back into place. Same thing with this uh, conduit right here. We're now inside. Okay, and then the last thing is, let's give it a try with this uh, concrete wall with something in the way. All right, see? Doesn't seem to affect that, and I can now pop it right back into place. Now, if this was clipped, or if this was rug glitched into the wall, and it caused the table to move as well, then these objects will fall off the table. But that's the only circumstance where you have to be careful. Otherwise, this is an extremely valuable tip. Oh, and I thought of another quick uh, bonus tip I wanted to give you when I was talking about item placement. Let's go back into, this is more than five, but it's a bonus tip. So let's say you have a really long list of junk items that you wanna drop but you don't want to drop them all at once. You just want, there's certain items that you want to drop. Or let's say there's some cool items in your miscellaneous section. You know, I've got some of those robot toy models, for example, that I wanted to place on the shelf. Well, those are way down here under R. Most people use the uh, 
the left thumbstick to scroll down through the list. Well, you can actually speed up that process by adding the keypad. The downward keypad in this case will then speed up that process and we'll get right down to like the robot toys, you know? You, you guys know what I'm talking about. I don't need to go through it, but that is another little bonus step that I was supposed to uh, remember to add to the item placement. Okay, and then the last must know tip, number five, is the settlement size glitch. And the reason I'm adding that in here is because I'm gonna be making a separate video about the rug glitch, but the uh, you don't have to use the rug glitch uh, to make really awesome settlements. But the first thing you're gonna run into is the settlement size limit. And that's the problem I had when I first started building Abernathy Farm here. I got really frustrated because I hit that size limit so fast and I was like, what? They can't, they, they, they're not limiting me already. And then of course I went online and started doing some research and found out there's ways you can bypass it. Then I bypassed it, abused it, and my system started crashing. I'm gonna go into an entire deep dive about the settlement size glitch in the next video. But in this video, I at least wanna show you what we're talking about here, okay? All right, the first thing to start off with is let's take a look at, uh, let's go into workshop mode. Okay, so in the upper right-hand corner, of course, you've seen that size limit. Right now, it's, it's up there, but it's not too bad. As you start adding more and more items, the line starts moving until you're into the yellow, and it, I don't think it ever gets to the red, you know? At some point, it'll give you a message that says you can't build anymore. First of all, if you need to make some room, you don't have to scrap items that you've built. If you just store them, by pressing the B button on an Xbox and whatever the equivalent is, then that will start to reduce your size limit as well. And by the way, clamped items also get stored automatically. They're not, they don't vanish. You don't need to uh, go in and deselect each wire. The copper is placed back into your inventory. All right, so I'm gonna store this wall and everything that was attached to it, all the clamped items will get stored in your workshop and they'll be there for you if you need to go back. Let me show you. Okay, see how there's a little number one down there? That means I've got one stored item that I can place without having to spend the resources again. If you scrap it, you'll have to rebuild it. Now there's gonna be a time and place when you wanna scrap things if you need the resources, that's fine, but. Okay, so notice I didn't deselect, I just pressed the arrow down button. Okay, we're gonna store this wall as well. And that conduit that was clamped got placed right back into our workshop. So as you start to do that in your settlement, uh, your settlement size limit will reduce. But what happens if you don't want to store this stuff? <laughs> what happens if you want to just keep on building? Well, there is a way to bypass that limit. And the way you do that is you drop items from your inventory. Most people use weapons, so that's what I'll do. All right, let's drop these two mini guns. Let's drop these Molotov cocktails. And uh, we'll drop a... Uh, December's child. So I'll go back into workshop mode. All right, here we go. It's always a little easier to show rather than tell. So I added a bunch of uh, concrete walls and a bunch of crazy stuff down there just to fill up that size meter. So now it's in the yellow. And you will see now with these items dropped, drop the miniguns, the Molotovs, December's Child. All right, when I pick them up now by storing them in the workshop, you'll eventually see that yellow bar turn back to blue. All right, let's see how many it takes. Boom, just those two right there dropped it back down to blue. That's awesome. So that's the basic functionality of the settlement size glitch and how to use it. Now, in the next video, I'm gonna explain why that works from a scientific standpoint, give you some fantastic tips to go along with it and some cautionary tales as well, because this is a really powerful tool that you're gonna wanna use in almost all of your building settlements, uh, but you need to know how to use it carefully, when to use it, how to use it, how to get the most out of it. And you might even be interested to learn why it's not even really a glitch. From a game mechanic standpoint, there's actually a reason why it works and a reason why it should work. All that will be explained in the next video. All right, my fellow Fallout 4 builders, that's going to do it for today's lesson. Hope you guys learned a thing or two. Be sure to hit that like button and turn your bell notifications on so you know the moment these videos drop. 
And if you want to do me a favor and share this playlist on Reddit or other websites, the short link is easy. bit.ly forward slash nomads shop class. I'd most appreciate it. All right. Thanks so much for stopping by and happy building. Class dismissed.